section 7.1, which is angles and polygons, you have three different or two different learning targets you need to be able to do. You need to be able to find interior, exterior, and the sum of interior angles and different polygons. And then you have to be able to write and solve equations based on those three different types of angles. When we get done with the notes, you'll have four different uh, assignments that you have to finish in the next day and a half. Okay? All right, so first of all, polygon review. You learned about it earlier in the year, but we wanted to just recap so you remember. Polygons are closed figures with no curves. So it can be a square, it can be this crazy shape here, or like a crown. But what you can't have is you can't have curves, so that doesn't work. And you can't have open spaces, so you can't start a polygon and then it, there's an open space here. So that doesn't work. Another good example of what doesn't work is maybe I have two triangles connected. That's not one polygon, that's actually two. So here's a couple good examples, two good examples, and those are three non-examples. Okay, if you remember the word regular, we've seen it some but not a ton. Regular polygons mean that they're perfect. And when they're perfect, they have equal sides and equal angles. So we have dealt with uh, triangles a lot, and a perfect triangle, a regular triangle, is an equilateral triangle because it has three equal sides and has three equal angles. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the sum. This is important. Whenever you see the word sum, we're going to use this formula. And the formula is n minus 2 times 180. And n equals the number of sides in the polygon. Okay? So I have some examples here. The first set of examples is just finding the sum of interior angles. So the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out what n is. For a decagon, that's a 10-sided figure, so n is 10. So I'm going to plug it into this formula right here. It's a horrible highlighter. And what we get is we get n minus 2 times 180. And instead of n, I plug in 10. So 10 minus 2 times 180. And you can either do the math in your head and say, oh, I know that that's 8. Or you can just let the calculator do the whole thing, and it will be 10 minus 2 times 180. And so the sum of the angles in a decagon is 1,440. That's what the 10 angles in a decagon add up to. Okay? All right, so what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and got a little Dora pause. I want you to pause the video to make sure that you have all the notes written down, and I want you to try B and C. When you're done, come back, and you'll be able to check your answers. Okay, so unpause the video, hopefully. And I went ahead and did these. And for an octagon, it has eight sides. If you notice, I keep writing the equation. The reason I wrote it three times is because the more you write it, you're going to have it memorized. So that's just helpful. So I plug in the 8. 8 minus 2 is 6. And 6 times 180 is 1,080. So the 8 angles in an octagon add up to 1,080. Same thing over here. A 15 gone has 15 sides. I wrote my equation again so I can get more practice at memorizing it. And it's n minus 2 times 180. n is 15. So 15 minus 2 times 180. 15 minus 2 is 13, and so 13 times 180 is 2,340. Okay. And if you notice, I have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5-sided polygon. And so a 5-sided polygon is a pentagon. Now, if it was a triangle, we would know that the angles would add up to 180, but it's not. So what I have to do is I have to use my highlighted formula up here to find out what the angles of a pentagon add up to. So it'll be 5 minus 2 times 180, which is 540. So I know that these five angles inside this pentagon need to equal 540. 
Now, if you, you notice, there are two equal angles on the pentagon. It's the ones with arcs. So if this one's 121, I know that this one over here is 121. So now I'm just going to write an equation, and I'm going to add up all the angles to equal 540. So I'm adding five angles to equal 540. So if I combine my terms, 121 plus 121 plus 101 plus 98, I get 441. And then if I subtract that from 540, I get 99. So that tells me that this x here is 99. Okay, so you're going to do the same process on problem B, where you first need to identify what type of polygon it is, and you have to find the sum of that. And then once you do that, you add up all six angles, so they add up to 180. Okay, so here's the door of pause, so you know to pause the video and try the problem. Okay, so we're going to remove the door of pause, and you can see what I've done. So there's six angles, so this is a hexagon, so n is 6, so 6 minus 2 times 180 is 720. So that tells me that all six angles inside that hexagon are going to add up to 720. So I write my long equation, and it is pretty long. Some of you might see a shortcut, but I'm going to go with the basic equation that everybody will understand. I combine my x's, a 1x, 2x, 1x, and 1x gives me 5x. I combine my numbers, 3 plus 15 plus 160 plus 152 gives me 330. I subtract 330 from both sides, and I get 390. I divide by 5, and I find out that x is 78. So I'm putting the pause back on so that you could take the time to make sure you check your work and you write it down if you didn't get it. So what we're working on now is exterior angles of a polygon. And the exterior angles are what's on the outside, okay? Well, if you think about it, when you walk around the outside of something, you go in a complete circle. And so when you go in a complete circle, a circle is 360 degrees. So the exterior angles of a polygon have a sum of 360 degrees. If I have a regular polygon, that means all the angles are the same. So if all the inside angles are the same, then that means all the outside angles are the same. So those are also going to be equal. Okay, so for the first problem, what we need to do is we just need to find out the, a the exterior angle of the regular polygons. Well, a nonagon has nine sides. I know that all nine angles add up to 360, so I could just do 360 divided by 9, and I know that each angle is 40 degrees. Okay? All right, so here comes the door of pause. Pause the video. Make sure that you're caught up on the exterior angles, and I want you to try B and C. Okay. Okay take the door of pause away. So for a pentagon, it had five sides. So it's 360 divided by 5. So each exterior angle is 72. And for a 20 gon, a 20 gon has 20 sides. So you do 360 divided by 20, which is 18. So maybe we should write this rule here. To find it, it's going to be 360 divided by n. And remember, n is the number of sides. Okay, so the next set of examples is a little different because they're not regular. These are funky shapes. None of the angles are the same. Well, I know that they have to always add up to 360. So my first angle is X. My second angle is 82. Then 113. Then 68. And all of those have to add up to 360. So I'm going to combine my terms. And I get X plus 263 is 360. So I'm going to minus 263, and I get 97. So I just found out that this angle is 97 degrees because all four angles add up to one, uh, 360. Okay? So now the second problem on the right is a little different because it has more X's, but it's the same concept. All the angles add up to 360. So here's your Dora pause. Make sure you have everything written out and caught up, and try letter B. Let's remove the door of pause. If you notice, I added up the angles. X plus 10 plus 78 plus X plus 22 plus 35 plus 51. All of those add up to 360. 
I have a 1x here and a 1x here, which gives me 2x. And then all my numbers added up to 196. I subtracted 196 on both sides, and so I got 2x is 164. I divide by 2, and x is 82. Okay? So take a moment. If you need to pause the video to make sure that you have everything down, there's the door pause, and then we'll go on to our last section. Okay, so let's go on to the last section. When we talk about each interior angle of a regular polygon, so what's that saying is if I have let's say a pentagon and everything is perfect, they're all the same, that tells me that all these angles are the same. Well, if I know what those add up to, then I can just divide by 5 to make them all equal. So the way you find what one interior angle is, that's just 1, you do the sum divided by n. Well, remember, we have a formula for a sum. You've written it a bunch today. And it's n minus 2 times 180. So you find the sum, and then you divide by the number of sides. All right, so let's look at the first set of examples, where it says find a measure of each angle in a regular polygon. Well, this one's a heptagon. A heptagon is seven sides. So I need to first find the sum. So 7 minus 2 times 180. And then I'm going to divide by how many sides, and there's seven sides. So here's the thing. You've got to make sure that you use parentheses and that you plug it in the calculator, or you do the steps by hand either way. So 7 minus 2 times 180, and then I'm going to divide by 7, and I get 128.57. So that tells me in a heptapolo, a hepti, excuse me, in a heptagon, when all seven sides are the same, that each angle is 128.57 degrees. Okay? So again, time for the Dora pause to make sure you're caught up and for you to try B and C. Okay, so let's remove the Dora pause. And again, a dodecagon has 12 sides, so I find my sum by doing 12 minus 2 times 180, and then I divide by the number of sides, 12. So I get an answer of 150 degrees. So each angle in a 12-sided figure, if it's a regular figure, which means it has equal sides, is 150 degrees. Over here on the right, uh, 25 gone is 25 sides. So I plug it into the sum, which is 25 minus 2 times 180. And then I divide by the number of sides of 25. And so I find that each angle in a 25 gone that is regular is 165.6. Okay. Last type of problems, find the number of sides of regular polygons with a given interior angle measure. So up here, we figured out that the angle formula is this. That's going to give me one angle. So I'm going to write this down because I have no idea what I need. But I do know that each angle is 150. Now, if you're pretty smart, you could see that it's going to be 12 because there's 150. Um, so I probably picked a bad problem here. But we're going to go ahead and do this anyways. So to solve this problem, to get rid of a divide by n, I'm going to multiply by n. So I get 150n is equal to n minus 2 times 180. Well, in order to solve this, I need to go ahead and distribute. So I get 150n equals 180n minus 360. So I minus my 180n on both sides. And I get negative 30n is equal to negative 360. If I divide by negative 30, I just got my n of 12, which is what we knew the answer was because in the example up above, a 12-sided figure had an angle of 150. So why don't you try B by yourself. Remember, it's the angle equals the equation, and I circled the equation up there for you. Okay, so here's the door of pause for you to try it out, and then hit pause when you're done and you want to check your work. Okay, so let's remove the door of pause so that we can go over the last one. So the angle is 163.64, and that's my equation. Remember, to get rid of an N, I multiplied both sides by N, so that's why it's 163.64N. And then I had to distribute. Once I distributed, I'm going to subtract the 180n. 
And so I get a negative 16.36. It's not the best number, but it works out, okay? And then when I divide 360, negative 360 divided by negative 16.36, I get this answer. Now it is a decimal, but I only need to write two numbers after the decimal, so it actually is just 22 sides. So a 22 gone has angle measures of 163.64 if it is a regular polygon.